tranquil, quiet, personalized, soulful, balanced, peaceful. These are not typical descriptors of basically any aspect of a theme park vacation at Disney or anywhere else for that matter, but they're exactly what you'll experience when you dine at Takumite, a signature dining option located in the Japan Pavilion in Epcot's World Showcase. I'm Heather, and he's Brian, and we welcome you back to Seeking the Magical. Today we'll be reviewing this incredibly peaceful respite in the middle of Walt Disney World, and giving you a few tips on how to maximize your experience at Takumite, or the House of the Artisan. Their multi-course, fine dining meals are served with exceptionally devoted hospitality in a relaxing atmosphere. Note though, this isn't just a place to step away from the commotion of the parks and eat amazing food. It's an experience featuring unique flavors and delicacies that are hard to find elsewhere and incredibly attentive cast members that are virtually unparalleled. We can't wait to tell you about it as it's one of our favorite dining experiences in Disney. But first, we want to thank you so much for watching and remind you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already so you don't miss all our reviews, tips and tricks, as well as our fun Will You Sign My series showcasing magical moments at Disney character meet and greets. So. In keeping with our unique Disney-fied way of reviewing restaurants, let's get to the highlights or heroes of this serene dream of a meal followed by the very weak villains that popped up, and finally, the moral of this beautiful dining story. The first thing that caught our attention with Takumite was the calm, tranquil atmosphere of the restaurant and the impeccable omotenashi hospitality the cast members facilitated throughout the meal. Omotenashi service is inspired by the traditional Japanese tea ceremony and means to wholeheartedly care for guests by anticipating and fulfilling their needs in advance. It's proactive, not reactive, and that perfectly describes our overall experience at the restaurant. Waiting to receive us when we arrived, the cast members greeted us and escorted us into the restaurant. As we entered and the doors closed behind us, the energy and commotion of the park subsided, yielding to a placid enclave designed to focus our senses to the taste of the food and the company with which we were sharing it. There, the host described to Kumite's themes, earth, stone, wood, washi paper, and water, and their importance to Japanese culture. Once seated, our server went over the menu, providing insight into each option, as well as providing her personal recommendations. She walked us through each course, describing the origins of ingredients, and details behind certain items' names. Her attention to detail continued throughout the meal, and we appreciate her guidance on the best way to enjoy certain items. For example, she recommended how to utilize only a small amount of soy sauce when eating the sushi. This was best accomplished by dipping the tips of our chopsticks in liquid prior to picking up the piece of sushi, as opposed to dipping the sushi into the sauce, which would have caused the rice to quickly absorb excess soy sauce that would overpower the delicate flavors. Not only was our server knowledgeable about the menu, her timing on when to interject in our dining experience was consistently on point. Going far beyond not asking us how our food is mid-bite, we didn't feel rushed, nor did we feel like we had to wait. Maintaining this cadence is important, as the tasting menu requires around 2 plus hours to leisurely complete. While this is a long time for a dinner service, it never felt like it drug on. It felt comfortably paced and appropriate for the atmosphere and dishes. One must be prepared for this though when making plans. Do not book a fast pass for an hour after the start of your reservation. You'll miss it! Do not plan on having dinner at 10 to 8 and be done in time to catch the nighttime fireworks at 9. It won't happen. Do plan to relax and unwind as you enjoy the calm of the environment and the balanced pace of the meal along with the additional flourishes that enhance the whole dining experience. One of my favorite little touches was being offered a warm wet hand towel to freshen up from the hours spent in the heat and humidity prior. Moving on to the heroic protagonist of the story, the food. Guests have the choice of ordering the prefixed omakase tasting menu or items a la carte. We opted to do both, meaning I ordered my meal a la carte while Brian selected the tasting menu. Notably, the portions for dishes appearing on both options are the same, 
so you don't have to worry about receiving a smaller helping of the must-get items on the tasting menu or missing out on some aspect of a dish if you select the a la carte option. The omakase tasting menu was among the best prefix meals we've had. Not quite French laundry level, but the tier right under it. It began with an umami packed otashi, including mushrooms and greens, with a savory sauce and proceeded to a truly unique dessert. And absolutely everything ranged from good to excellent. The second course was the tamari sushi, that included pieces of salmon, toro, tuna, uni or sea urchin, and yellowtail, which was served with a leek dill sauce, a citrus sauce, and soy sauce. Every bite of the sushi was expertly prepared from fresh ingredients and none presented a fishy flavor which has haunted many of my previous sushi experiences. I appreciated that our server described each item on the plate and helped guide the order of my indulgence. First, the salmon was a very pure flavor and quite enjoyable. The bite was not too intense and appropriately set the palate for the rest of the platter. Going in, I thought this would be my favorite sushi since I really like salmon. However, it was in fact the toro, or tuna belly, that really blew me away. The bite was almost buttery and filled my mouth with warm flavors. The edible garlic flour on top provided a mellow garlic undertone that complemented the toro exceptionally well. It was hands down the best sushi I've ever had. The third bite was tuna from a different part of the fish. It had an initial mellow flavor that was approachable, but the taste soon developed in my mouth to a fresh, savory sensation that added a deeper dynamic. Thus far in the meal, the flavors were phenomenal, and I was loving it. But then I reached the uni, which must be described as the anti-hero for me. I could tell it was very well prepared and likely a great representation of uni, but like its orange color, the flavor was intense. I think the term briny is best to politely describe it. To me, in my taste buds though, it tasted like fish scrubbed with soap and never rinsed off. I hated it, but I respect what it was. I found that sometimes there are dishes I'll try and not enjoy, but I get the feeling that I didn't have the greatest version of the item, so I'll keep trying it to see if I might like it. Now, I've tried uni that I trust to be well made and handled, and I honestly just don't like it. Thankfully, the tamari sushi fish on a high note with the yellowtail, which gave my palate a delightful reprise as it tasted like fresh fish perfectly accented with scallions. It was an excellent end to a fantastic course. I'm a little bummed that I couldn't try any of it because I'm allergic to seafood. Oh well, it is what it is. I'll happily stay alive and indulge in your next course over and over again. As much as I love most of the sushi, the biggest star of the whole dining experience for both of us was the Nikomi Wagyu. The deep rich flavors of the short ribs on roasted bone marrow were elevated by the wasabi shiso bavarwas and yuzu kosho which provided just a little bit of heat and notes of citrus while the warashita sauce blended everything together. The meat was exceptionally tender and we unabashedly scraped every bit off the bone. We found ourselves unintentionally eating the Wagyu very slowly to savor every morsel and try the different components individually and together. My favorite element was the yuzu kosho. I admit, I've thought about it specifically, along with the rest of the dish, many times since. And I know we're both dreaming of the day we can return and have the whole thing again. If it wasn't clear already, we're saying you should dine at Takumite. And when you do, order the Nakomi Wagyu and don't plan on sharing it. Next up on the tasting menu was the One Bite Hashi Asume, which was a very refreshing combination of cucumber, compressed watermelon, and pickled watermelon rind. It was the best palate cleanser I've ever had. It completely reset me for the next offering while maintaining its subtlety. The main course on the tasting menu was notably better than the a la carte option I selected. Brian's dish was a dual pairing of Japanese A5 Wagyu strip steak and American Wagyu strip steak, served with roasted cipollini onion, curried potato, mushrooms, daikon, and watermelon radish sukemono, more of the tasty yuzu kosho, as well as wasabi, an arima sancho pepper reduction, and matcha malden. Both steaks were great and quite tender, but I have to say I think the American Wagyu won out that day. It was more flavorful and the meat was a little more my style. While tasty, 
neither steak was my favorite or the grace I've had, especially relative to the price, but we can discuss that issue later. Both were enjoyable and well prepared. Thus far, the most notable dishes were all part of the omakase tasting menu. And while it continued to shine by serving up another winner for dessert, this is the first course where the a la carte option that I selected actually outshined the offering on the tasting menu. Agreed. Your dessert was extraordinary, but I loved how unique and strangely beautiful mine was. The tasting menu dessert was a soy rendani, which is a Japanese water cake with kinnacle crumbs garnished with white and pink rose petals and a tiny bit of gold leaf. I'd never had water cake before, so I was really looking forward to trying it. Texture-wise, I'd describe it as the world's lightest jello with a very mild flavor. As odd as it sounds, I love the gelatinous consistency of it by itself, but I also thought the kinnacle breadcrumbs that accompanied it added great texture and substance provided a strong finish with subtle flavors throughout. It would never be a go-to dessert for me, but it was an enjoyable experience. Jumping over to my a la carte option, I was somewhat surprised how much I loved the Hachimitsu Castella, which is Castella cake, honey meringue, sesame brittle, hojicha custard, and honey caramel. The dessert was a borderline revelation for me. I've had Japanese desserts that I've enjoyed, but I've never been wowed, so I usually forgo dessert in favor of more savory Japanese cuisine. I'm so glad I didn't do that this time though, because wow, was it good. The cake was super delicate with a smooth, almost poreless crumb and a moist, even bouncy texture. It practically melted on my tongue with a light flavor that was offset perfectly by the mild sweetness of the honey meringue and the subtle depth and added bite of the sesame brittle. It rests comfortably in the top tier of desserts I've had in my lifetime. No lie, I loved it. The omakase tasting menu concluded with the Japanese tea service. Our server described the ceremony as being performed in the spirit that this moment is once in a lifetime. The entire traditional tea ceremony contains over a thousand steps, so for convenience, guests are presented a simpler but still elegant modified version. We really appreciated how the steps of the ceremony were explained to us as the tea was prepared. I was shown to grasp the bowl with my right hand while resting it upon my left palm. Then I raised the bowl to show appreciation and brought it back down in front of me. After turning the bowl clockwise twice, I was invited to enjoy the tea, which was very, very good. It was perfectly warm with a calming aroma that alleviated any tension that remained in my body from a day spent running around the park. It was arguably a perfect end of the meal. The final two heroes of our meal were a couple of traditional drinks. I ordered the Tenda Chi Heaven and Earth Junmai Dai Ginjo Sake as our server recommended. It was incredibly smooth more than any other sake I've previously tried, and I would happily have it again. I was alerted by the promised show and ordered the Sakura Jima. Named after a volcano in Japan, the drink contains Kayo Japanese whiskey sour chilled with whiskey stones. Thankfully, the presentation of the drink was as mesmerizing as I hoped. It was delivered shrouded with cherrywood smoke in a glass case. When our server opened the door, the cloud cleared to reveal the drink, and we were treated to the smoky aroma. Notably, the smoke isn't just for show. You can taste it in the drink, where it blends with the whiskey to add depth and mellow any of the harsh flavors. Moving on to the villains of the dining experience, beginning with a notable technicality. That is, the restaurant is presented as Disney's signature dining, but it's sadly not an option on the Disney dining plan and does not accept any dining credits. This may change in the future, but it's important to know that is the current status. Finding that out at the end of the meal would be an unfortunate surprise, so it's best to be prepared. Thankfully, there were only minor villainous elements throughout the meal, but as the price tag was so high, so too were our expectations. Yes, Takumite utilizes some pretty pricey ingredients such as Toro and A5 Kobe Wagyu that can cost well over $100 a pound, but there were still a few things that could have been better relative to the price. Specifically. The A5 Kobe Wagyu was quite good, but it was not the best version we've had and it didn't live up to the hype. It was exceptionally tender, but it lacked flavor and depth, and I would rather save some money and get the filet mignon at either California Grill or Jico before shelling out for the A5 Wagyu again. Another dish that was a bit disappointing was the Camo Rosa, 
which was marinated duck with spiced kabocha squash, edamame, Japanese mizuna greens, cured duck egg yolk with a grape reduction, and leek ash. The presentation was beautiful as it was delivered under a cloche that the server lifted to reveal billows of smoke. But the execution was lacking. The duck was slightly under seared, yet it was perfectly medium rare. Still, the fat needed to be rendered a bit more. More problematic though was the grape reduction. In small quantities it worked, but it quickly overpowered everything, forcing us to scrape off whatever excess sauce we could. Overall, the duck was good, but not great, and certainly not worth the price. With so few villains and so many heroes, it's clear the moral of the story is that we highly recommend Takumite. If it's not cost prohibitive, it's a must-do at least one-time restaurant for anyone interested in exceptional, authentic Japanese cuisine. The dining atmosphere, the amazing food, and the exceptional service combined to make this relatively new restaurant a major standout in the fine dining arena in Walt Disney World. Moreover, the meal is truly an experience. The moment you enter the restaurant, you feel removed from the hustle and bustle of the park. The crowds and the noise melts away, and you're welcome to enjoy the tranquility of the setting. Factoring in the price and noting the high quality menu, including the a la carte and tasting menu, the excellent service, and the relaxing environment, we give Takumite a 9.5 out of 10 and place it in the upper echelons of dining at Walt Disney World. We hope you found this review helpful, and we really, really hope you get the chance to try Takumite for yourself. If you have dined there, we would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Either way, we welcome your questions and feedback. Thank you again for watching. Please give this video a like if you found it helpful, and remember to subscribe to our channel to catch more dining reviews, tips and tricks videos, and fun vlogs and character interactions. Until next time, remember to hug your loved ones, cherish the memories, and always continue seeking the magical.